Fresh and Famous, we are back. Our main interview for tonight. Man, what can I say? She's a mother, a socialite, fashion guru. I mean, her debut on Mob Wives was season two. She co-manages R&B and pop group Final Draft, who we had on the show recently. And uh, she's the granddaughter of an inf- infamous mobster, Ramona Rizzo. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? So I take it the fans loved the beginning of season three on Sunday. Yeah, you know what? They're ready for us, and they're happy to have us back. And it's just been just, you know, just an ongoing, you know, support system of everyone just saying, you know, we want Mob Wives. And it's just like they, all the fans just came together, and they finally got what they wanted. So we're happy to do it. That's good. That's good. So tell us why you chose to do Mob Wives. Um, I guess it was for, like, you know, different types of reasons. Um, I was asked to do the first season, but I had a decline because I was in some legal trouble with my husband, and mm-hmm. I couldn't, you know, speak upon things, and I had just come back to the country from being gone from America for about three years. So I declined on the first, and then how I thought that, you know, the first season had went, I wasn't happy with it, and I just felt that it was just time to basically shake things up and, just, you know, maybe just to justify certain things and maybe put some people in their place. Yeah. Now I seen the I seen the sneak. I needed also to support my children, so it was it was one of the easiest ways. It was one of the easiest, but yet hardest ways to do it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And I seen um I seen the sneak peek, you know, and and a lot of stuff that happened, you know, before and after Staten Island. And I and I just want to say, you know, before we continue on with the interview, that our hearts are still, you know, are are, are still deep, you know, for what happened. Um, during the hurricane, so just to let you know. Yeah, that. Hurricane Sandy was really a really hardcore devastation for all of us. You know, mm-hmm. we, many lives were lost, many homes were destroyed, many people's, you know, everyday surroundings don't exist anymore. So we're just trying to rebuild and basically just try to go on. You know, you can't replace a life, but, you know, in, in the sake of others and in the memories of them, you have to go on. Yeah. Now, how do you, how, how does it feel dealing with that? I mean, you know, because in the show, you know, like I said, it's a lot of stuff that happens before and after Hurricane Sandy. So what's the healing process like, you know, after losing so much and still having to go along with being a TV star? I mean, I guess the healing process would be something that really didn't even really have anything to do with being, you know, a TV star. Because I would have been out in the streets, which I was the day after it happened. It was just, I guess, the, you know the ability to get out there and to help people. There was one little girl that, you know, had a home full of toys, and here she was picking through debris and getting other children to use wow. toys. So I had gone to my, I have, I'm, a, I'm a very big Barbie doll collector. Mm-hmm. I had um, on Staten Island, you know, many, but I have in another, another home in Jersey. I have thousands. So mm-hmm. I had the ones that I had in hand, and I went to go bring them to her because, you know what? Just to make that girl smile at that moment, especially me being a mom, mm-hmm. it really made everything not easy, but just made me feel like, you know what, we're, we're going to be okay, we're going to try to be okay, and if we come together as a community, mm-hmm. we're, we're going to get, we're going to work through this. Wow. And that kind of made it a little bit easier to see that little hope in that little girl's eyes and how appreciative she was over getting a Barbie. Wow. Good for you, Ramona. Very, very inspirational. Very inspirational. Ramona Rizzo right here on Fresh and Famous. Now, your grandfather, he was he was deep in the mob, you know, Lefty Guns, and he knew a lot about the politics of it. What did Al Pacino, because Al Pacino did play his um, his role or, you know, his um, his yeah. character in the movie. What did what did Al Pacino do in the movie that didn't acknowledge Benjamin's true profile? Because you and your family knew a lot about your grandfather, but the directors and the producers and, of course, the actors did it, only knew bits and pieces. So what did Al Pacino do in the movie that didn't really characterize, you know, your grandfather? Well... What I want to say first, a lot of people don't know about it, when Joe Pistone had written the book, you know, the book was all um, bought by the movie company. The movie company changed it, so they changed, you know, people from the book into the movie to make it a little bit more, you know, movie-worthy, I guess, with all that, you know, you know, lights, camera, action type of bullshit. My grandfather <laughs> didn't get murdered, nobody sent for him, nobody killed him, you know, if you do your history, I mean, you know, it is what it is, you know who who was the shooter and who was, you know, yeah. who was the killer. My grandfather was not killed. He died, unfortunately, from cancer on Thanksgiving Day. Oh, wow. So right then alone, just to see somebody, you know, having my grandfather murdered and everybody, you know, thinking that that didn't happen that way. It would have, supposedly, they're claiming that that was something that may have happened, but my grandfather was arrested and he served 13 years in jail. Mm-hmm. And he got out a year and a half later 
to die of cancer. That was one issue. The second issue, they try to make him like he was very, um, like he wasn't intelligent. My grandfather was highly intelligent. I mean, um, he also was a very, very loyal person. Right. So, you know, if you go back and you listen to some things and you do your research, that will show one of his major qualities was loyalty. Mm. And to me, that's where I get that sense of loyalty from, the sense of family from, and, you know, fighting in what you believe in and who you believe in. And also what pissed me off the most was, you know, our family um, is a family of dressers. Mm. My mom went to FIT. My grandmother had many retail stores. And, you know, her, her mom came from Ellis Island and had all these clothing stores. They made my grandfather, like, the worst dresser. My grandfather was probably one of the best dressers of his time, besides being a very, very handsome man. Mm. So, yeah, that kind of aggravated me. <laughs> wow, I, I see. I mean, they didn't come to you guys and, you know, ask a few questions or interview you or give you the permission to, you know, use him as a character in the movie? Well, what happened was when somebody had, my grandfather had passed, so there was no estate on it, and this was just basically Joe Pistone's story. Um, what they did do was they were trying to put my grandmother, who was still alive at the time, mm -hmm. put her in it and the picture of being this annoying ex-wife. And at the time, I worked for one of the top law firms, so I had wrote them a letter that if they were going to have my grandmother in it, you know, that was not going to happen. You know, we were mm -hmm. going to sue them. So I stepped up to the plate for that. I also have had basically confronted Mr. Pacino in um, a movie set, which was the area which I was born in, a um, little in, um, a little lower east side. Mm -hmm. So I had gone to the movie set, and I spoke to him for about a good hour, and he was very, very, you know, very respectful, very kind, very courteous. I have to say, it was, it was a very good meeting that put me at ease knowing that the book was changed, you know, into this big movie propaganda. Wow. Question number three. Yeah. Besides tension with, with other, um, you know, other...